Hey everybody, 11,100 pounds, classic clods, clod? I'm the clod, quad slide, Montana, bath and a half fifth wheel coming in here. And overall, I think it looks pretty nice. As far as uh, a used RV like this is gonna go, I'd give it like an, an eight out of 10. Uh, which, uh, you know, I, I think is pretty good. The decals on the outside are the biggest ding that I give it. You're going to see that the de uh, decals are faded and weathered a little bit, cracked a little bit, which unfortunately is really not um, a uh, indicator of the TLC the previous owners put into it. Just at the time that Keystone was making RVs, they were using thinner grade decals that just broke down a little more quickly. It was, uh, it's unfortunately something that has affected a large number of RVs, even those well-maintained. This is a case of used, not abused. I got a chance to meet the folks uh, that came from New York to work with us and uh, said, you know, what's going on here? Like, why, why are you getting rid of this beautiful fifth wheel? Is it a case of like the, the kids grew up or something? I said, no, no, no. One of the kids is 18 and one of them's nine. They're getting big and we just, uh, we needed to update uh, to, to something that fit us a little bit better. And they stayed within the Montana family getting actually the very last 362 RD, which is a cool rear den floor plan that I'm, I'm sad is not going to be produced anymore. The folks that traded this in literally got the very last one. And I love that big cabinet right in the middle of the slide right there. That's actually a callback to the days when RVs used to have like these boom boxes in them basically. Now, if you're hearing squeaking constantly, it's because again, the folks really did a good job taking care of this. And it, it sounds like, uh, you know, half court at the Cavaliers game or the Pistons or Bulls or what, I don't know what team. I haven't really watched basketball since the 89 and 90 bad boys out of Detroit because my, my dad was a big Pistons fan, so I thought I had to be a Pistons fan. And it turns out when I grew up, I wasn't much of a sporter. <laughs> All the windows open for airflow, by the way. And this has something, every now and then you see an old concept and you go, why isn't that done more often? Like if we walk back in here, this is an opposing slide quad bunkhouse. It's very, very cool. Like you've seen things like this before. Like we've had these on our channel from Open Range and, and North Point and a couple other builders in the past. But usually the, the, the half bath is only accessible from the bunk room. This is a dual access half bath. Plus you got your master bathroom upstairs. But during the day, this just kind of keeps people out of your bedroom. And you don't have to be super duper tall to reach that, by the way. There's a handy dandy little battery powered remote control over there. But how cool is this? This, this double entry setup right here. It kind of baffles me that you don't see more of it in the modern market. And again, this is a little unconventional, but you've got this uh, like center symmetrical storage cabinet right here. It flows through to both sides with some dresser space down below. So there's plenty of hanging storage and there's a dresser drawer for each individual bed. And I think it's very cool that the upper beds flip up with that gas dress so that on a rainy day, if you need to use this like a entertainment sanity space, you could throw a TV over here, which it looks like somebody did at some point. Uh, you know, that's gonna be a uh, absolute godsend right there. Getting this door out of the way, moving forward. Classic kind of, whoops, did not mean to close it that hard. My apologies to the previous owners. But thankfully, the uh, Montana, stronger than RV nerd chicken arms, <coughs> moving on. Uh, the TV here, this is a classic kind of style. Entertainment focus hadn't really taken hold yet in the RV industry. So RVs had TVs sometimes. It just wasn't the biggest focal point in the RV. The good news is that's on a swing out bracket. So on a rainy day, if you want to make it face over here toward the slide seating, you can pull that off. Uh, that is a, if I'm not mistaken, is that a stone casting? No, that is a plastic sink. I'm sorry, it looks stone cast for just a second, but it's not. I do like, though, how it is mounted into that uh, kind of pressed membrane countertop space, and that's a bigger oven. It's kind of tuned into that. It's a 22-inch oven where you can actually do some cooking. Now, this is a classic upper deck, which means a classic bedroom-bathroom split bath, which is where the, the toilet's kind of in its own closet space, and then the shower is uh, and the vanity is kind of open air. The uh, manufacturers used to build like this like crazy, 
because it really helped keep the weight down on the RV. But one of the things I liked about it is that it gave us a really nice space right here to get dressed. Now we cracked that stuff open over here. You may have seen how that was washer dryer prepped. And you may have seen how I had that uh, blanket kind of pulled back. The RV uh, has a brand new mattress in it from the new Montana that the folks just ordered it. So it's a brand new 2021, uh, like made one day ago, uh, 60 by 80 true queen bed, which is kind of cool. The uh, folks had a nicer mattress that they put into their older Montana they decided to keep with them. This is 50 amp, by the way. In today's world, second airs are standard on Montanas, but that's only really in the last couple of years been a standard thing. Uh, second airs were way less common not too long ago, but she is 50 amp and she is second air ready. And it occurs to me, the one place we haven't really seen is over here in the water closet, as it were. And a quick look here with the slides closed. You are not going to be able to access the bunk room or the uh, rear half bath, although you can get through the kitchen pretty much in its entirety if you got to stop and feed the brood and make them some sandwiches. The good news, if you do need to make a bathroom stop, remember your master bathroom up here remains completely accessible, which is kind of nice. Now, one of the things I really like about this is the complete lack of slide amidships over here on the door side, which gives us just a nice, big, large, unobstructed patio space. Starting over here, Goodyear tires, and they are looking like they've had a good year. You know, I, uh, it, I, I was willing to go for the dad joke, and then the moment it came out, I, I feel ashamed. I, I have instant regrets. This right here, this is the predecessor to the modern camp kitchen, and I'm not really convinced it was ever used. I mean, it, it doesn't look like it was ever used, which is interesting to me because if I had something like this on a camper, I'd be all over it over all the time. But those classic little flip down kitchenettes, I, I don't see where a lot of people use them with frequency on the pre-owned RVs that come in here at Haywoods. Now, um, when this was made, auto leveling just really wasn't found in the RV industry, but it does have power front leveling jacks and power rear stabilizers. So everything's still push button easy. And you see where the folks on the uh, front jack there, you see those like cross members. Um, those are uh, extra stability jacks right there and they do the job. They work so well in taking the wiggle jiggle out of the RV at your campsite. Slide awnings up there looking good. We'll get a look at them from the top down when we climb up to the roof. One of the other things I wanted to show you real quick before we do that, though, is that this does have that enclosed privatized docking center, which, no surprise on a Montana, but on something a couple years older, RVs built during this time didn't always have that feature. So I just like pointing that out when I see it. And that's it right there. That's those folks heading back to New York with the last 362 RD. It was technically, man, it came in right at the cusp. It was a 2021 model. We weren't sure if it was going to be a 21 or 2 when it landed. Tell those folks congratulations as they pull out of here. You can see they added some uh, roof vent covers here and there, and they were on top of their care, maintenance, and upkeep. I am seeing, though, they've done a very good job of doing their touch-up beads. Exactly like It looks like they did very good work doing it. But what you folks need to know is at this point, after you've done a touch-up bead, uh, you don't want to just keep slathering new sealant on top of old sealant uh, infinitum. Uh, what you want to do after this, and I think that you've got a couple years till you got to worry about it, but after this, that's when you're going to be due for a full peel and seal. That's just a little uh, TLC kind of pro tip there, free of charge for you from your Uncle Josh at Haywood RV. And I, I had kind of a thought. It's called a 345 BDQ or something like that, like bunk, den, quad, slide. I don't, I don't know. Those letters, they, I swear sometimes they just pull them out of thin air, the alphabet soup of this business. It's called a BDQ. If you like it, probably better call PDQ because that's the way things have been going lately. Like you might have noticed a couple times in the distance, we're looking pretty threadbare out here. It's, we're selling plenty, but as soon as it lands, it's going just as fast. I, uh, if I had to guess, because I don't have pricing information available to me while I'm recording out here because I jump on stuff as it arrives. Um, I, if I had to guess, somewhere between. 25 to 30. Don't quote me on that. I'm just shooting from the hip. I could be totally wrong. Watch. This will blow right up in my face. If that happens, I'll be totally, totally wrong. <laughs> but if you have any other questions, uh, you like what you see, leave us a comment. Let us know what you're thinking. I'll do my best to fill in or you can give our team a call here.
And when you're ready, we're ready. We'd love to work with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.